Hey Meeple people, and on today's vlog, we are playing Pit Formula by Cyber Rhino Studios. Let's get to fixin'. In a formula race that's not only about cars and pilots, take on the role of a crew of brilliant mechanics who can put the racing cars back on track insanely fast. Pit Crew is a frantic board game that will require concentration and fast thinking. During each of the races, you'll be presented with a series of car components to fix. Each component is solved by a different math operation. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and open interval between numbers. Every player must solve these operations simultaneously as they look for the answers within the tokens on the table. Be freaky fast to solve your pitting car issues and win the race. Hey, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi. So, Sarah, what game are we playing today? Today we are playing Pit Formula by Cyber Rhino Studios. They sent us this copy. Thank you very much. Um, it is a two to four player game that is coming soon to Kickstarter. And we are playing with a prototype. So this is not final form, but it should look something like this. Um, and the way that it plays is that we are a pit crew for a driver who is in a formula race. Um, and we are going to be working on various parts of the car um, in order to um, help our driver get back to the race as fast as possible. Um, we're gonna play through five races, and at the end of five races, whoever has accumulated the most points wins the game. So the way that it works is that, um, oh, I should also mention that um, in addition to being a prototype copy, we also somehow managed to get a Spanish language copy instead of an English language copy. Uh, and we do not speak Spanish, um, but we were able to cobble together enough from like Google Translate and stuff like that. And also we got an English set of rules. Yes, um, so that we were able to to actually like be able to play this and understand it. So the cards that you'll see in the game um, are Spanish language cards, but we were able to just use, like I said, Google Translate to figure out what um, what they meant. Um, so yeah, that's another little side note. Anyway, uh, so what's gonna happen is at the beginning of each round or race, a player will turn over a card. Um, and this right here is just flavor text, so we didn't have to worry about this. But this right here is going to tell you what people have to do in order to um, sort of end the race for this round. So I believe we said that this word meant all. Is that right, Nikki? Yes. Okay, so all the players have to repair both their uh, fins and their- uh, Gasoline. Their gas Fuel. tanks, yeah. So what's gonna happen is um, the player who won the previous race is going to turn over this card and read this to everyone. So all the players have to repair these two parts of their car. Uh, and then play simultaneously begins for all players where we are going to be um, working on the parts of the car that were mentioned by this card. Um, so all players are gonna be working on their fuel and their fins. Um, so these are different kinds of math that we'll have to do. Uh, and what what's gonna happen is like for this one right here, this is gonna be a sort of like a sequence. So what two numbers stand between four and seven? Those are the two numbers we're looking for. So it's gonna be four, five, six, seven, right? So in order to solve this mathematical problem right here, I just have to find the two red tiles on the board that I'm looking for. So in this case, it would be five and six. So I look out into the field here, there's two fields, I look over here and look over here, and I say, okay, here's the six that I need, I take that, I put it on the card, I'm looking for the five. Okay, here's the five I need, I'll put that on the card. Now this problem has been solved, this issue with the car has been fixed, and I'm gonna move on to the next one. So this one here is, I can add or subtract these numbers together. Uh, so let's just say that I add, let's see, we're looking at 48, I believe. So again, I would look out, I would find the green four and the green eight, and I would put those two tokens on the car. Now I have done everything that I need to do uh, that's, that's like dictated by the parameters for this particular race. If I wanted to, I could end the race by reaching out and grabbing this little flag right here. Um, if we were playing with more players, there would be flags for first, second, and third place, but with a two player game like we're gonna play today, there's only one flag. Um, so I would grab this here. If there were additional flags, play would continue until um, all of the flags have been taken, but since it's a two player game, this is the only flag we're playing with, this will, it will end the, this round when someone takes the flag. 
So I take the flag and then we review our math. The round ends and we just kind of check our math, make sure that we're actually correct. If we were correct, the player who had the flag is going to get a trophy and the trophy is gonna tell us in a two player game, I get two points for, for coming in first. So I'm gonna move my little car up on the track over here, two points. Additionally, every player, whether they uh, were able to claim the flag for this race or not, is going to get points for problems that they solved on their car. Um, so if you solve a problem with the tires, you get one point for that. And if you solve a problem with any of these center components here, you get two points for that. Um, so in this case here, I would have solved these two problems correctly. So I've gotten an additional two, four points. So I would go up to six on the racetrack over here. Um, if I was wrong, uh, then I have to pass my flag on to the next player who would have come in uh, next in the race. And since this is only a two player game, that would be Nick. If he um, had come in second, but one of my maths was solved incorrectly, then he would get this uh, and the trophy. Um, and one way or the other, no matter who wins this race, all players get points for any problems that they've solved in their car. Um, after this is uh, completely resolved, we're going to take all of our tokens from off of our car. We're going to randomly put them back into the fields. So maybe something like that. We're going to take any cards that were flipped over, even if they weren't solved. So if, for example, um, Nick had ended this race and I was still working on this one right here, I would take all the cards that I had revealed from my car this round, I would discard them, I'd get new cards to fill in those places, and we would begin again. We play through five total races, and at the end of the game, whoever is the furthest ahead on the point track, has won the game. Cool. Shall we try it? What about the spare parts? Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so there are some spare parts. That's this stack right here, and there is a limited number. Um, but what's gonna happen is as we are playing, because we're playing simultaneously, and because uh, multiple players are taking tiles from the board out here, if it happens out, that you cannot find the piece you need, maybe because you just can't find it, you're looking and you're like frantically searching and you can't find it, or if maybe it's because one of the other players has already taken the piece that you need, instead of just leaving your problem unsolved, you can find whatever pieces you can find, but if you need a piece that you can't find, you can take a spare part and you can add that as well. And then when you're when you're checking your maths at the end of the round, you just say, you know, this, this was supposed to be a green two, for example. Um, and that allows you to complete that particular problem and, and fix that part of your car. However, they're a little costly because each race, uh, the first one you take is gonna cost you a point, the second one you take is gonna cost you two points, and so on. So it gives you some maneuverability if the piece that you really needed was gone already, or if you just can't find it and you feel like you're wasting time looking for it, you can take one of those spare parts, but just keep in mind that they will cost you a little bit at the end of that race. So yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's get into it and right. see who is, I, I suck at math, so, <laughs> uh, especially in multiplication, but there are some variants where if you could take them away, but yeah, I think they had some, for kids, I can't. It's like, ah, I'm a 29-year-old adult. <laughs> so there, there's um, there's four parts to your car, right? There's the tires, uh, there's the gasoline, there's the um, fin, and then there's the the engine, right? So And they each have like a different style of math, and they each kind of give you a choice, right? So this one right here, the tires, it's going to be simple addition or subtraction of single-digit numbers, and you can choose. Do you want to add these numbers or do you want to subtract? So I could, I could answer this with a 10 or with a 4, and either answer would be acceptable. Um, the... Excuse me. The fins are the same, except that it's double digit numbers, right? So this one here, I've got 45 plus or minus 15. So I could either answer this with 30 or 60. Either one of those numbers would be acceptable. Um, we also have the sequencing, which I talked about earlier, which is just really simple. It's just three, four, five, six, and that solves that one. Uh, and then finally, the multiplication, three times nine is 27. So I'm looking for a two and a seven 
to solve this card right here. Um, and that that's kind of the formula behind each part of the car, right? Um, and the incidents that come up each round of the game, they're either going to dictate that all players have to work on the same parts of your car, like the one that we talked about in the example, right? Everybody had to work on their fin or their gas tank. Um, some of them say that a, the leader, whoever's furthest ahead in the race, has to work on a particular problem while all the other players have to work on some other problem. So if I was ahead in this race, I'd have to work on the engine and the gas tank while every other player would just have to work on two wheels and their gas tank. And then finally, there are other ones that say, if you're the furthest behind, you have to work on this while everybody else has to work on this. So furthest behind has to work on all four tires while everybody else works on two tires and the fin. Uh, and these come out randomly. So um, you, you never quite know exactly what, you know, each player is going to be working on. Uh, and then, and you have, like I said, it's a, it's a four, five round game. So the first four rounds you get normal incidents and then in the fifth and final round you get a super incident um which is going to be like particularly difficult and they said thematically that that shows like the um uh like the um what is the word i'm looking for i guess like the adrenaline and um the, the rush of yeah like the rush of the race starting you know you're heading towards a conclusion so you're really really uh you know pumped up and things like that so the last leg of the race is a super incident and it's going to be a little bit more challenging than the incidents you you saw in the previous four rounds hmm. um so yeah so that's kind of a rundown on pit formula um should we try it yeah, let's go ahead and get get into it. All right. So we'll get back to you guys in a second here, get to the mid game, and we'll talk to you how it's going and who's the mathematician and who is not the mathematician. But yeah. All right. Toodles. Welcome back, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi. So how's it going so far in Pit Formula? It's going well. We've had three races, um, of which Nick has won two and I have won one. Um, however, we are tied on the racetrack over there because I have been able to, um, solve more parts of my car. I've been able to fix more parts of my car. Um, so we're tied and we're headed into the last regular incident race. We'll have one more round after this with a super incident. Um, but I feel like it's anybody's game at this point. Um, and I'm interested to see how the race is finished what do you think yeah uh, i agree i think it's uh you know interesting to see who will win the instance kind of like you can't really tell you don't play through enough incidents to, to uh know or get the feel of all of them because they're all different um yeah and you only play with five every well you only play with four of the basic ones so yeah. and only one of the super ones so i'm not good at math i'm not, just lay, lay that out there I've been winning by the skin of my teeth and um, and creative solutions, we'll just say. Uh, and Sarah over here is the math whiz. Every time I need anything uh, done mathematically, she's like, done, done. I'm whipping out my calculator during games like, how many points is this? I actually think that's an interesting part of the design, though, is there's actually in the rules, there's actually a, a portion that talks about um, sort of trying to achieve a design balance between players who are particularly good at math and players who aren't. Um, and as you're playing, um, right, like in the in the previous round, um, the player who was in the last place had to work on two tires and their gas can, and all other players had to work on their tail fin and their engine block, right? Um, that's what you have to accomplish. However, at any point in the game, if you want to work on other parts of your car, you can. So, and if you are successful, then you might get more points. So there's this dichotomy between um, trying to race to complete what's needed for this particular race and, and capturing the flag, and also trying to sort of press your luck a little bit so that you can repair more of your car and potentially earn more points that way. Um, and the designer said that they were very intentional about actually adding that in so that players who were a little bit, you know, better at math, maybe they would decide, okay, you know, I was able to solve all the problems I needed to solve for this really quickly. If I actually just keep working on my car, the other player isn't 
ready to finish this race yet. So if I just keep working on my car, I might be able to earn some more points while they're messing around. Uh, and there's a sort of like push your luck aspect to it. Um, and I think that it does a really nice job answering the imbalance issue that might arise if you're playing with players who are, you know, more skilled at math than than their opponents. Yeah, because there's definitely that gap between us. You can do math really fast without a calculator, like just, just without a calculator. And I'm over here like, one, two, I have not enough toes for this. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just think there's that nice balance between that because sure. at first we played in our other game, uh, you just destroyed me one round. You were, I was stuck on something and you were just like, I'm going to get this, this, this. And I was like, wow, this is not going to be fun. And then like later on in other, um, you could call them event cards or instance, um, there was points where I felt like I could catch up and I did and it was it was nice it was a nice kind of like feeling because I was like man I'm gonna just get totally crushed in this game and I'm not gonna enjoy my experience at all I think another thing that makes it um that helps to balance it out is that if you are if you race through your um your problems on your car and just to snag the flag and be the first place in the race if you make any mistakes um, you still get to add the points that you got for solving like the problems in your car, but the actual race pendant goes to the next player who who um, who would have come in next. So if you go too quickly and you make mistakes, um, then you'll you'll actually cost yourself um, the race. Points, yeah. So I think I think they've done a nice job. I was a little bit worried at first because I know that I'm better at math than Nick, especially quick calculations. Um, so I was a little bit worried that it was going to be really, really imbalanced and it wasn't going to be very much fun for either of us. Um, but I feel like they've done a really nice job building in um, sort of like protections against that sort of thing in the design. Um, and I, I think those those protections work pretty well and they don't add, you know, over complications or anything like that to the game. So, yeah. Should we carry out the last two races and see who wins? Yes. We're, we're tied right now, so it's, it's really anybody's game at this mm -hmm. point. And then she turns on her, her super brain, and then all of a sudden I get destroyed. Yeah. I She's actually like, zoom, 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 I zoom. made a, a mistake in some very simple calculations near the beginning of the game. and Because it, I feel like an, another uh, one of the, ba the another one of the balancing acts within the game is the speed. Yes. Because you're yeah, trying to, you're trying to you know, go fast, right? You're trying so to go fast, like, and so... And you if, you make any, if you make any mistakes, then like they, it can cost you. So, yeah. And, and early on in the game, I made a, a miscalculation in very, very simple math. And it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be good at math and I couldn't even add one plus one that wasn't the problem but it, you know something very similar like that um so it's it's you know even if you're like I'm good at math it's like yeah well try doing it fast and see if you're still good so yeah well let's get back into it and see who is the winner and loser of pit formula by cyber rhino studios all right see you guys in a sec toodles hello sarah hi <laughs> Oh. And welcome back, Meeple people. Sarah is the title of the winner, winner, chicken dinner of this racing game. I had one of those big trophies. I'd be yeah. like, mwah, mwah, and drink chocolate milk out of it. <laughs> yes. It's all. So, Sarah, would you like to tell the the people, the viewers, the Meeples, on uh, the Meeple peeps about what happened in our last leg of the game? Sure. So, the last leg of the game, the last race that we had to play. Um, we had to play a super incident. That's what happens at the last uh, race. And for this particular super incident that we drew, um, all players had to repair three tires, their engine block, and their gas tank. So um, we were racing to complete that. I did three of my tires and my uh, Four gas of your tank. Tires. Well, I did three of my tires, my gas tank, and my engine. And then Nick was still working on it. So I was like, I'm uh -huh. going to just try to do like one more tire and see if I can um, like get one more point out of this while he's still working on that. So I did my last tire and then I knew he was getting pretty close and I wanted whatever points were going to be on the um, like the winner's uh, badge, for, yeah. Yeah, badge for that race. So I went ahead and grabbed the flag and ended it. And by doing that, um, by doing that last tire there, I got the single point I needed mm -hmm. to win the game. One stinking point. One stinking point. So, um, 
I think that this is is really fun, especially for um, sort of like a, an educational sort of game. You know, this is very like, how do you do different kinds of math and trying to gamify math a little bit. Um, and sometimes I feel like games that try to gamify educational concepts can definitely nail it on the educational side, but not necessarily like on the fun side. But I feel like they did a really nice job balancing fun and education in this game. What do you think, Nick? Thanks. Uh, I agree with uh, the gamification of the math that did that the the balancing act that they did was a, a did a really bang up job on that. Yeah. I was not too uh, fond of it at first because of all of the math and the speed. When I first looked this up on YouTube, I was like, "Oh boy, this is not gonna Sarah's gonna crush me, and it's <laughs> not gonna be fun at all." But it was uh, it was the opposite. Uh, I I enjoyed it, maybe not as much as Sarah. But, uh, I thought it was fun. I, and I know that um, being well suited to something can make it, you know, more, even more fun. fun. Yeah, more fun. So I understand that, like, it may not necessarily be as fun as I think it is if you're not well suited to math. But Nick's not, and he said that he enjoyed it. So. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It wasn't, uh, especially the balancing. Uh, if, the, if the balancing was off, I would have had a worse time because I would have been just crushed each time because I'm not good at uh, math on the fly, and Sarah is quite good at math on the fly. Base uh, math. Base, yeah. But um, but yeah, the, the balancing really helped out and made the game a more enjoyable experience. So, I, I mean- think, Go ahead. No, what were you gonna say? Uh, I was gonna say, I think that they did a nice job with um, this theme Mm -hmm. and these sort of mechanics, right? Yeah. If you've ever watched a formula race before, even just like for a couple minutes at like, you know, a relative's house on a holiday or something like that. Um, one of the things that's always fascinated me about them are the pit crews and how fast the pit crews do work that is like, to me, is like insane. You know, they change those tires out in like seconds flat or they refuel and they, you know, do all this maintenance to this car, but usually in, you know, just mere seconds. Um, and I think that this, this really captured that feeling like you were actually a pit crew, um, working on a race car that was mid race and you had to, you know, you had to move quickly. You had to work on different parts of the car and working on each part of the car required a little bit different of a knowledge or skill set. Um, so I feel like it was a really nice, um, really nice implementation of the mechanics in this theme. Um, and I wish we could have understood the text on the cards a little bit better um, because this is all just flavor text right here, but it tells you about whatever incident you're dealing with, right? So like yeah. this one appears to be like maybe some lightning lightning strikes or something like that. And then there was like one where like the car exploded. There's some really fun ones. There's one where there's like a rampaging rhino is on the racetrack and you're trying to like deal with that. Um, so I think if we could have understood the flavor text, um, that could have even brought some more like fun theme into the game. Um, and the only reason we couldn't is because we just ended up for whatever reason with the Spanish language version. Um, but if we had one that we could understand, then I think that would have been even more um, engaging Over, yeah. and, and, and interesting. All right. and I think it was really cute and I think it was fun. And um, like I said, I think they did a nice job balancing uh, educational things with a fun theme and fun implementation. Nice. Well, we hope you all enjoyed our vlog of Pit Formula by Cyber Rhino Studios. And yeah, hopefully check it out on Kickstarter when it comes out. And uh, just check out the game on BGG and see if you would be interested. What? Is it, yes. is it called Pit Formula on BGG? It's called Pit Crew on BGG, but if you put in Pit Formula, uh, you'll get uh, Pit crew, okay. and you, you'll, you'll you'll get end up in the same location. But all right, well until next time, we hope you all enjoy this vlog, and toodles.